Dr. Ken here with Mental Modelling, Cognitive Tool number eight. And of course, we're really getting into now the thick of some of the great cognitive tools we can use to improve our learning in electrical physics. Now, Mental Modelling, because electrical physics is abstractive from the start to the finish. We're always dealing with something abstractive when it comes to electrical physics. So it's abstractive in nature. That is the very nature of electrical physics. So if you remember, we're now building on cognitive skill number one, abstraction. So mental models that represent 3D physical realities, things like a map, for example, is uh, whether it's a street map or a topographic map, it is a model that represents a 3D physical reality. We have mental models that represent non-physical concepts, uh, road rules, a story. These create mental models, but they are non-physical things. We have mental models that represent physical realities that we can't sense directly, and that's electricity. So that's why we're talking about mental models. We generally call this thinking in pictures or thinking in language, text, and often a combination to some extent of both. So most people actually prefer to think in language. But unfortunately, this does not lend itself to electrical physics very well. So for many people, we've got to train ourselves to think in pictures and models rather than think in language and text. So mental models that represent 3D physical realities. Some examples. An example is a road map. These maps are 2D models. They only have two dimensions. They're flat. Maps can be very general, a world map, or they could be very specific, a street directory. Yes, but I just use my GPS. It's still a 2D map. A GPS is just an automated 2D map with some voice cues to tell you when to turn left, when to turn right. You don't need a map to get home each night because we have a mental picture or a model in our memory and our thinking. We have, in essence, learnt this because the map, the content, has a context. The context is to find your way home, gives the model meaning. So you can see we've learnt something. This is because the map, the content, it has a context. Its context is the way to find our way home and it has meaning. So 2D map, two, sorry, 2D maps are a combination of two dimensions and language. They're about 50-50. They've got about 50% mental modeling going on and they're using about 50% language. So we can use some of that skill to build mental models. So mental models that represent non-physical concepts. So to keep the metaphor going, also a mental modeling skill, that is the use of metaphor, Mental models can represent non-physical concepts. Technical term like metaphysics, like the road rules or telling a story. They are metaphysical. They're above actual physics. If you hold a driving license, you have built up mental models of the road rules as concepts in language in the most part. Stay to the left give way to emergency vehicles are examples. There is no fixed or strong picture to represent these rules. They vary with every situation. So your model is constantly being adjusted and varied and you can actually adjust and run with it on the fly. When presented with a situation, you recall the script, the language concept, some problems you can solve on the run, no problem. Story is conveyed in a language, 
in language in the most part, isn't it? Try watching a movie with no sound. Reading a novel, you create the mental models required. At the movies, the director has actually done much of that stuff for you. So the actual effort in creating those mental models is much reduced. So story is a great way to create mental models, but it's based on language. Our third one is mental models that represent physical realities that we can't sense directly. It is much easier to build a mental model of the way home. I can see a 2D map model. I'm driving a car or riding a bike home in 4D. That's height, width, breadth and time. The world of metaphysics, in other words, the actual road rules or the a story is the water we swim in. It's the way we naturally do many of the stuff and it's just automatic to us. That's why we say it's the water we swim in and often comes without us having to do much thinking about it at all. The world of electrical physics combines both these aspects of metaphysics and a 4D reality. So electricity is a 4D reality it has height, width, breadth, all those things, and operates within time. So for electrical physics, we need to develop mental models that represent what is going on, often at a subatomic level, the level of the electrons in particular. There is no fixed or perfect model. It will vary on each person how they would like to construct or picture the model. So what about thinking in pictures and text? So far I've explained that we generally think in pictures or we think in language text and often a combination of both of these to some extent but the heaviest leaning is normally towards that language text-based modelling. First example of maps won't work without direction described in language, that is north, south, east and west. So maps have a strong language component. Rules and stories won't exist at all without language. But even language uses pictures like analogy and metaphor. Also mathematics is a language, just not a alphabet based language, but rather a symbol based language. So both languages and pictures actually work together here. Electrical physics is different. Language in text and story is not enough to explain it. Mathematics predicts it well, but often does not make what it is plain. Pictures often fail through poor analogies and the contrast varying nature of the energy type. So the constant varying of the energy type, particularly when we get into AC. So we must build our own mental models that we can use to cope with this thing we call electrical physics. So as I said, most people prefer to think in language. Unfortunately, thinking language, analogy and metaphor, which is our default mediums to dealing with the universe, are not going to be sufficient to help us understand. They're useful, they've got a place, but they're not going to be sufficient to apply and so make meaning of electrical physics. We're going to have to do extra stuff beyond analogy, language and metaphor. At the same time, we'll need these skills. We just need to amplify and adjust some of these skills to practice the skill of building mental models that will help us with making sense of this world of electrical physics. The first skill is that of using imagination. The next presentation, or the next cognitive tool, is imagination. So I'll leave that in detail to be explained then. The skill that we need to amplify are imagination, abstraction, and strategy. 
So how are we going to go about amplifying imagination, abstraction and strategy? So for imagination, watch toolbox number nine for imagination. Abstraction electrical physics is best exemplified through mathematics. It's, it's our strongest abstraction tool. As already explained, maths is just an abstracted modeling system. One of the best things you can do is to learn how the basic model works through algebra and geometry, particularly also trigonometry. Particularly when we get up into AC, we're going to be using a lot of triangles and a lot of right angle triangles. So trigonometry is a great tool. So algebra, geometry, and particularly trigonometry. There are plenty of places to do this. My suggestion is the Khan Academy, it's an online. This is a free online school and it has great little videos. They're never any more than five to 10 minutes long each to teach you about a particular concept. And they're a great way just to learn the basics of algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Strategy is all about being able to think ahead, look down the road, see what's happening, and maybe make some estimations about what is going to happen. Reading the possibilities, making mental models of these and working through each of the models to see the possible outcomes. The best way to do this is games, playing games. So this skill can be taught through playing games. Some obvious examples, um, the traditional chess is a great way to start. Uh, games like Risk is a great one. The list goes on and on. There is plenty you can do. Um, there's one I particularly like called Scotland Yard, and it's a bit of fun and forces you to think two, three, four, five steps ahead. So playing these strategy games and playing them often will help you with building mental models and playing with that plasticity of your brain to be able to do that and think in modeling rather than thinking in language and text.